Gift Biz Unwrapped, Episode 47. I think anger is such a beautiful expression. We just never learned how to appropriately share it or deal with it. Hi, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to Gift Biz Unwrapped, and now it's time to light it up. Welcome to Gift Biz Unwrapped, your source for industry-specific insights and advice to develop and grow your business. And now, here's your host, Sue Monheit. Hi there, I'm Sue, and welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Whether you own a brick-and-mortar shop, sell online, or are just getting started, you'll discover new insight to gain traction and to grow your business. Today, I am so honored to have Dr. Sean Duperon spending time with us today. From London to Athens to Munich to across North America, Dr. Sean Duperon, a six-time Emmy Award winner and nominated Nobel Peace Prize nominee, is a good gossip researcher. She travels the globe educating corporations, entrepreneurs, universities, and government agencies on what inspires people to share good things and how to powerfully lead with compassion. Her case study is Project Forgive, a nonprofit leadership foundation that reaches millions in social media. You've seen her featured in major media, including CNN, ABC, Inc. Magazine, and USA Today, to name a few. This PhD in gossip, and yes, I did say gossip, used gossip theory to make Project Forgive's five-minute video go viral, even capturing an endorsement from Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Welcome to the show, Sean. Woohoo! I mean, thanks for having me, Sue. Over and above your intro, I'd like to learn a little bit more about you through our podcast's traditional, albeit a little bit different approach. If you were to describe a motivational candle that portrays your personality and your passion, what would it look like? In other words, what color would you gravitate to and what is your favorite quote these days? So the nomination for Nobel Peace Prize is new. So that's a learning how to step into that kind of energy. And it's a very beautiful thing. So before that last week, I would have definitely said pink because I love pink. The transitions that have happened even in the last week, I would say gold, gold, like this deep burnt kind of yellow gold would be my motivational color in a candle. And my favorite quote is mine. I know it sounds so self-serving and For me, forgiveness is the ultimate of everything in life. And my favorite quote is mine that I share a lot in Project Forgive, and it's called, Accept the Apology You'll Never Receive, which to me is the epitome of maturity and leadership. Ooh, I think we're going to probably be getting into that as we continue on with our chat. So maybe we'll just let that sit right where it is for now, and we'll get back into that again as we talk about Project Forgive. How does that sound? Sounds exquisite. All right. So I have to tell you, when we read all the information and we hear your intro, one word absolutely pops out, and that is that word gossip, right? And gossip kind of, you you think like, oh, you know, that person who's always the gossiper and all of that. And I know you have a real different approach and definition of what gossip really means. So can you share that all with us? You know, when I was a master's student, because mass communication, I worked in media for a long time and worked in newsrooms. I had a professor say to me, Sean, have you ever considered the conversation of gossip? There's like 100 researchers that are very indelibly connected into this topic, and it's not what you think. So I went and did some research, and I was so inspired by the topic that I actually chose it to be my expertise as a PhD student. And you're right, when you think gossip, you think mean and nasty, but that's not what the research shows at all. That mean, nasty stuff is only about 5 to 7%. We're actually really good people, and good gossip or word of mouth is the best way to grow your business, especially if you're just starting out, you know, in the gift wrapping or you're baking or crafting, whatever it is that you're doing. When people love what you're doing and they start talking about it in such a powerful, beautiful way, that's really how your business grows. So how is gossip different than referrals and getting word of mouth, pass along information? You know what? I'd call it authenticity. Because in good gossip, people become raving fans. They get so excited by what you're doing. Like I do a boot camp. I very rarely advertise it, if at all. I sell out every year because people that go, they have such a beautiful, authentic, heart-centered experience. They see media so differently and their experience is so exquisite. When they share it with somebody, they're not just saying, oh, you want to learn about media? Go to Sean's Media Mastery Boot Camp. They say, no. They say, oh, my goodness. 
you got to go to boot camp. Even if media is not on your purview, it's a class about fear. It's not what you expect at all. You will get so much comfort in your skin that discomfort will go away. You'll be doing things you never thought you'd be doing. Oh my gosh, that is a must take class. Now that good gossip right there with authenticity and passion and excitement, you build a tribe because it's authentic and it's loving and they cannot not share about you. That's very different to me than an actual referral. So when you're talking about authenticity, you're talking about heartfelt, wanting to really help somebody out and sharing information, whether it's a story or a resource or something like that, but truly from the heart for the well-being of the recipient. Yeah, it's like, go see Star Wars. Oh my gosh, I'm not even a Star Wars fan. I (laughs) I loved it. Like I seen movie one and movie three, my grandkids love it. I'm not a Star Wars fan, and I saw it, and it's really impactful when I say, you know what, and especially my girlfriends that aren't Star Wars fans, I'm like, go see it. You're going to be so touched. It's so well written. It's well done. I can see how the genre is working. That it's heartfelt would be one piece of it. It would just be like straight talk. You know, your straight talking girlfriend or friend says, oh, my gosh, you got to buy that laundry soap because it actually does what it says it's going to do. It gets rid of rust stains. And you believe your friend because you love and trust them. Of course you do. You're absolutely right. And so how does that fear element play a role? Well, fear stops us from doing everything. And it's usually unconscious. Like we sabotage ourselves. We get busy doing stuff. We think we're being productive, but we're not actually making sales calls. A lot of times when I'm coaching, because I coach a lot on communication and marketing and social media, media, and sometimes my clients are really struggling with cash flow. They're busy doing marketing, which is important, don't get me wrong, but they stay away from the actual sales calls because they might fail. You're going to get the no's. You get lots of no's. For instance, if you're getting business right now and you have a couple of raving fans that love you, a sales call would be calling them up saying, hey, Jessica, I know you love what we did for your employees. Do you have a couple of people that you'd be comfortable introducing me to because you know that they need this kind of service? This makes such a difference for me if you can share some really good things about what we're doing and would you be willing to do that? That takes freaking guts. That's different than putting a tweet out and trying to get your social media going because so many of us, especially when we're starting our businesses, we're trying to do social media, we're trying to do cash flow, we're trying to figure out what CRM to buy, we're trying to figure out what podcast to listen to, we get overwhelmed. The bottom line comes to facing fear fear and courage because the bottom line is if you don't have cash flow you don't have a business absolutely there's two things that i would reinforce here for our listeners number one is the fear you need to get over that fear because you're not going to be able to take action you're just going to be stagnant and do like what sean is just talking about you'll just do things that are easy they seem like they're taking a lot of time and you're doing something for your business but you're really not moving your business forward the other thing is asking People need to be directed on what to do next. As Sean's talking about in terms of testimonials or referring somebody, people are more than willing to do it, but most of the time they're not going to offer it up. You have to ask for it first. I'm going to make a broad statement. I would guess that those of you listening, if you're gift wrapping, if you do crafts or if you're baking, you're a very creative soul. And a lot of times you're empathic or you feel a lot of things because you can feel what people like. So it does hurt your feelings when you get a no. And it's even scarier to take risks. And I just want to say that I am terrified a lot. I had to do something terrifying last week based upon my goals. I have a client. They're called Stardock. They're a video game company. They're deeply connected with Microsoft. Microsoft is on my vision board. I want to do global training for Microsoft and go in and do communication leadership, presentation skills, forgiveness as a business tool in that realm of communication and leadership. And it took some courage. And I said to Chris, he's my client, I said, Chris, there's something you can do for me. And he said, what? I said, one of my dreams, and it's on my vision board, is to work with Microsoft. I want to be one of their trainers that they love and adore and let me infiltrate their company to really cause productivity, excitement, and loyalty within their workforce. And I know you have a contact in the digital realm of Microsoft. I'm wondering if you'd feel comfortable to recommend me. His answer was, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, send me the email you want. Send me the material. I know the person who's so awesome. He doesn't necessarily hire trainers, but he would know who to send you to. And if I recommend you, it's a done deal. Something will happen. I don't know if you'll get a yes, but I know something will happen. I was scared to ask Chris to do that. I was scared. And it's okay to be scared. People that do amazing things, especially creative. That's why I was so attracted to you, Sue is I know you attract really creative, loving, kind people. This to me is the ultimate in a podcast, being with loving, gracious, beautiful people. 
Oh, well, thank you for that. I do have to say, I love this story that you just shared because it's somewhat comforting to hear someone like you still gets nervous and still has to reach beyond their comfort zone. I talk about this all the time. The magic happens outside your comfort zone. But the fear of stepping out of that zone, it's so nerve wracking and you just have to prepare as much as you can and then just do it. And look what happened. How exciting is that for you? And then you have this relief like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I did that. Absolutely. And you know, the mantra for me is dancing and being comfortable with being uncomfortable, like actually becoming masterful at allowing yourself to be uncomfortable. And I call it farting. That's what I mean. <laughs> it's like if you can stand the smart, I know it's like politically incorrect or whatever, but I love this analogy because it works. You're at the mall or whatever, someone farts and you're walking, you're like, oh gosh, you know, and after three seconds, you walk through the fart and it's not that deep. And when you're making an ask or you're being really uncomfortable, it's like a fart. And of course, some farts last longer than others. I get it. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know, maybe doing that presentation to a corporation to get a larger account. For me, it's media interviewing your four minutes on air and it's four minutes of farting is what I call it. It's like a fart to stop you from your dream. Because all it is, is a fart and getting really comfortable with the smelliness and the messiness of it. It's not that freaking deep. So we all have to remember that, you guys, when we're facing something that we are uncomfortable with. Let's just remember Sean's words. It's just like a fart. <laughs> it really is. It works. <laughs> I think I'm going to be hearing this repeated when I go to trade shows and such. Just you wait and see. <laughs> All right, you guys. So gossip. Gossip is good for your business. You want it to be authentic. You want it to be exciting, just like you're talking to your girlfriend. That's how you want your clients to be talking about you. I want to move on, Sean, now into what I know is very passionate for you. And this is the whole Project Forgive. It's a nonprofit. And I'd love for you to just, you know, start and tell our listeners what the base of it is. And if you're willing to share the story, because I think it really will let everyone understand how deeply passionate you are about this project. Absolutely. The story is, and we have a, the little video went viral. You can see it on our website and our new website is about to launch. It's exciting. I did a little video. A friend of mine, his name is Gary. His wife and his two children were killed by a drunk driver. My children babysat those children. Judy was my husband's business coach. It was a horrible horrible day when we got the news that this family was killed and Gary wasn't in the car at the time. Then I get another call later that day informing me that the man who killed them, his name is Tom, is also another dear family friend. Every time I share this, whether it's a podcast or CNN or whatever, I get goose pimples because I knew in that moment both these families were amazing, know that, And that me being at the crux of that intersection of knowing both families and knowing about this conversation of forgiveness, knew that I had to do something. I never had any inkling to start a nonprofit, never had any desire for any of what's happened. We're reaching millions in social media. I'm talking about forgiveness, although I do a lot lot of that in my marketing strategy business because I'm all about taking a risk and how quickly can you forgive yourself when you screw up? Because, you know, in that farting realm, you're going to make a lot of freaking mistakes. You just are. And the game is, can you grieve your losses so you don't keep making the same mistakes? Because I believe we keep making the same mistakes over and over until we get the lesson, right? So anyways, this video goes viral and it's, I don't even have words for it at this point. We've had Naomi Judd get involved. Archbishop Desmond Tutu endorses us now. We're actually making a movie. Start off as a five minute trailer. The movie is going to air this year. We're actually waiting for some legal stuff that's almost complete. And I'll be able to share more about the date. You can go on Facebook and, and get our updates and see what's going on there. The community there is so exquisite. And we decided to start a leadership foundation because we're seeing that with all these corporations that I personally work with, conversations of compassion and forgiveness, integrity, diversity are missing in corporations. And it's the people that work at corporations that are actually are the corporation. And they are exquisitely yearning for these leadership trainings. So that's what we decided to do. And when the movie comes out, our goal right now is to make it free. I think we're going to be able to do it. That's why I'm not announcing it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Make it free. If you're inspired to donate to us, you can. Everybody in the organization are volunteers. And at some point, I'm sure we'll be hiring an executive director to get it moving forward because I'm so busy and all my good gossip stuff. And I uh, love that conversation of forgiveness. And I really appreciate you asking about it because it really is a beautiful, beautiful conversation. It certainly is. Can you talk a little bit more about this? Like, where was the bridge of all right? this horrible situation happened? You're here in the middle of all of this, which I'm sure very conflicting emotions. How did you make that leap or that decision? Or where was the light bulb that came on that said, 
the world needs this. I'm going to make this into a nonprofit organization or just to do the video. Where was that transition? As soon as I found out that Tom was the one that killed Judy and Sammy and Alex, I knew this was going to be a video. I didn't know it was going to be, I thought maybe a documentary. Most people that hang out with me or go through my trains, whatever, I'm very open about this. I'm an incest survivor, and I share that very openly. I'm a, at this point, I'm a 51-year-old grandmother now, and I've done a lot of work, a lot of tears, a lot of shifting around the conversation of being molested. And I'm even at the point, this is not endorsing molestation, believe me, and I'm at the point where I can say it's one of the best things that's ever happened to me, to be an exquisite, compassionate, loving person. And sometimes things happen to us, and I like to say things happen for us, for our growth. And um, I wouldn't trade my past for nothing. Would I wish molestation on anyone? No, of course not. And what happened to me is what happened to me. It's my job to embrace it, grieve it, be angry about it, accept it, find solutions, and actually become the most exquisite person I can become. So when I did find out that it was Tom that killed them, and I know Gary so deeply, I knew this man was going on a horrendous journey. And I knew he would forgive Tom. I knew he would. I know Gary so indelibly. That's exactly what happened. And knew that was inevitable for who these families are. Both families are just amazing, beautiful souls who like are in that philosophy. Although I don't know if they use the words, oh, it didn't happen to me, it happened for me. They're in that philosophy. Because you, when you meet people, you can tell when people get mad and blame others and stay in that very bitter, angry place. There's a genre of people that stay there. And then there's those that are growing and loving and evolving that look for the lessons in all the things that happen for us. And um, when I heard it was Tom, I knew something big was about to happen here. It was an evolution to create the foundation that happened over a series of time. As soon as we started reaching millions in social media, I mean, we didn't reach millions right away, but the social media growth happened quite quickly. Using gossip theory, I was able to do that. That's why I teach a lot of social media how to do it. So uh, it was inevitable. Wow. Two powerful stories for sure. And I know that there are a lot of people out there who are hurting just like that. And you don't necessarily know when you meet people, you don't know what their backgrounds are or what they've been challenged with. And I totally agree with you, Sean. I mean, there's people who will just use that as the excuse. And I don't mean to say it not genuinely or or with passion or anything, because I know they're hurting, but that'll be the excuse not to move forward. And then there are other people who will take it and they'll have to deal with it. And does it make it right? No, for sure not. But you still have a whole life to live, you know, and are you just going to let that then affect the rest of your time here on earth? Hopefully not. Is that the type of thing that Project Forgive gets into? Well, you know, it's so funny because there's so many forgiveness organizations in the world. There's some beautiful ones. Project Forgiveness out of the UK, they look at restorative justice and like um, atrocities like genocide and people forgiving people for murdering their families. There are many organizations. What Project Forgive focuses on is we focus on you and your own personal journey. Because if you're in a lot of pain and you lost your job and you got breast cancer, it's really hard to care about what's going on in Syria. Okay, right. right. It is. It's really difficult. So we focus on that personal, professional development growth of you internally so you can face your stuff and move forward and say, because even part of the forgiveness process is being able to speak your truth. You know, like if you're mad or, you know, there's so many issues around anger. That's one of the biggest things we discovered while we're filming Project Forgive. We interviewed these little kids. You'll see it in the viral video. And we asked them, you know, what is forgiveness? And they're so cute. It's like when you, it's a bunch of sorries or when you don't hate anyone, it's so cute. And then we also asked them, what about anger? These are all four-year-olds. Every single one of them, there were 24 of them, said anger was bad. And I thought, dang, is that interesting? Because the stages of forgiveness include shock, anger, grief, solution, and peace. And people get stuck in anger because they don't feel it. And we usually equate anger with violence. You know, mothers against drunk drivers, they got good and mad for a long time. Look what they caused. Anger is a very good, powerful emotion. It can be misused. Don't get me wrong. We need a lot of education around what anger means. Because if you're angry and you're not feeling it or expressing it, That's when you eat six Reese's peanut butter cups instead of sharing what you're upset about. Or that's when you work 20 hours a day because you're so committed to proving yourself. I'm sure there's many people listening that work way too many hours. It's a worthiness issue. And a lot of times what I'm noticing doing this documentary is it's because we haven't faced and embraced and accepted our anger. I think anger is such a beautiful expression of we just never learned how to appropriately share it or deal with it. 
Those are some words for thought, honestly. And I know for sure because I know a lot of our listeners because a lot of them are customers of, of my business. And I know that what you're saying is true. Mm. Absolutely. And we're talking here about more deep rooted anger. What do you think about now? You know, many of the people listening are business people and they've had issues where I think they've become angry in their business. Not as deep as the issues now you're talking about, but let's say an employee stole from them or a customer bashed them on social media or things like that that produced a lot of anger. Are there any suggestions about how to deal with that type of a situation? This is a perfect segue, Sue, because it's going to take us back to the quote that we started with at the top of the show, accepting the apology you'll never receive. One of the activities that we do in a lot of our leadership trainings is this notion of accepting the apology you'll never receive. So that employee that stole from you, chances are pretty good they're not going to say, oh, Sue, I am so sorry I stole from you. I'm, I know I betrayed your trust and I'm going to give you that $100,000 back. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it up to you. I'm so sorry I did that. Or the person who bashes you on social media. Oh, Sue, I'm so sorry that I bashed you and said you were the B word in social media. I really didn't mean it. I was having such a horrible day. You know how you do stupid stuff sometimes? I'm going to go back and retract it and fix it and blah, 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 blah. The odds of those happening are smaller. And so the practice for you, because this is about you, forgiveness is about you. Getting through anger is about you. I actually go in my mind's eye when I'm offended and I actually pretend that they apologize to me. So what I can do is go through the process of accepting the apology you never received. Can I give you an example of my neighbor? Absolutely. Yeah. So I have this neighbor and I'm still talking about him because I haven't mastered (laughs) (laughs) it. I'm going to call him Bob. Okay. (laughs) All right. So I'll go out to the mailbox. This is right next door to me. I'll go out to the mailbox and he'll go, good morning, Sean. And I'll look at him. I can already feel my eyes rolling and the skin, my skin crawling going up my legs. And I'll say, I know, Bob, but it's not morning. It's 6 p.m., you know, because it's at night. And he's telling me good morning. And he'll say, I know, but you look like you just got up. He does not say that. (laughs) And that's just one example of a cabillion, okay? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So needless to say, he's one of those people, as soon as I see him, I'm just already, oh, shoot me in the freaking head, okay? <laughs> so, but the thing is, in this game of what are you broadcasting, because that's my mantra in business, what are you broadcasting? What's the signal you give off, whether you're posting in social media, whether you're meeting with a client, whether you're creating marketing materials, what's that signal you're giving off? And even though it's just Bob, this guy, his what he gets from me is that I'm an angry, annoyed woman. That's pretty much how I respond with him. And that doesn't sit well with me because I'm pretty fun loving. I'm I'm pretty straight. I've got a really snarky sense of humor. I'm really nice. And I'm very soft spoken sometimes. And I'm very emotional. Angry person is is not how most people would describe me. But with, with Bob, I can see how he would see that. So I'm like, okay, what can I do so I can shift me? So I am not this raving bee with him, you know? That's where Accept the Apology You'll Never Receive came from. I started practicing. This has been going on for two years now, okay? I started practicing when I saw him that he, in my mind's eye that he was apologizing. And he was saying, Sean, I am so socially awkward. You've got to know by now. This, Like, if you could apologize, this is what he'd be yeah, saying. Yeah. you got to know by now that I grew up in a very dysfunctional family system. I was neglected deeply. And I'm so awkward, not only with you, with the entire neighborhood. I'm ostracized by the neighborhood. And the truth is, I really just want people to love me. And I don't know how to do that. And so these weird, awkward things come out of my mouth. As soon as I say them, I feel so stupid. And then I wonder why people don't want to connect with me. And all the truth is, I just want to connect with you. Now, you notice when I say this apology, because I've done this a lot, Sue, I soften. I shift. I am no longer that angry, mean, judgmental, annoyed woman with him. I've shifted who I'm being. And there's differences have been made. Is it perfect with him? No, because I'm never going to change him. Where I have power is changing me and shifting me on a dime. That's where I want my power. That's why I think forgiveness is a skill and why I think Mother Teresa called it as an active way of being. I want to be that notion of forgiving person. And people get weird with that. They think, oh, you're going to be a doormat. No, that's just bull crap. No, it's not about being a doormat. It's about being powerful, 
leadership, compassion in your own suiting who you want to be in the world. And not only who you want to be, you're actually being it. And that's the advice I would give to folks who've had some really hard things happen. It's a good place to start. Of course, I'm going to tell you, go to Project Forgive on Facebook because we're giving all kinds of videos and tips all the time on how just how to get through life's crap sometimes. But it's a great reminder and it's a great reminder and skill set and a tool to help you in those hard moments when you just want to kill people. Yeah, honestly, I love your statement. Forgiveness is about you, and you know, sharing that story about visualization. I mean, I'm starting to feel star- sorry for your neighbor just by the story that you're telling yourself. I agree with you. The only actions that we can really change are our own actions. And at the end of the day, when you go home, you want to be proud of everything that you've done and the way you've presented yourself to the world, regardless of how people are responding to you or what they're doing to you. So this is a a wonderful example of a way to do that. Whether the story is true or not, who knows? But you never know what other stuff people are dealing with. You know, who are we to judge someone what someone else is doing? And it gives me peace and has me calm down and be my loving, confident, powerful leadership self. And then you feel better about yourself because I'm sure if you were acting snarky, you wouldn't be real happy with yourself either when you walked back in the house. Nope, doesn't work. Either that or just don't ever go get your mail anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Well, listen, um, Sean has mentioned the Facebook page. She's mentioning the documentary that's going to be coming out. I know we can't get any more information on that right now, but when it is available, you guys, I'm going to drop everything into the show notes so you'll have all the links to Project Forgive, Facebook pages, all these different things where you can learn more about what Sean is up to. And I encourage you guys to go and take a look. You'll find a website wealth of information there in preparation for this interview, went through a lot of the other interviews she's done, looked at some of the things that she's putting out. Some of them are free. There's a really, really good download that you guys can get about how to look right in an interview when you're being actually videoed. So great one for you guys to go grab. I'll have all those links over on the show notes page for you. All right, Sean, we are ending up now with my favorite part of the interview. You've shared so, so much great information. This one is for you. I'd like to present you with a virtual gift. It's a magical box containing unlimited possibilities for your future. This is your dream or your goal of almost unreachable heights that you would wish to obtain. Please accept this gift and open it in our presence. What is inside your virtual box? You know what? It's a word. And um, the word that you even used in what you were saying, because my word for this year is unlimited and slash limitless. And what I've discovered is that at this phase of my life, I can't even focus on what I want because it's not even doesn't even touch what can actually happen. So I'm playing the game of limitless and it touches my heart to say it because I'm so open to whatever the universe, God, Allah, Buddha, goddesses, Native Americans, whatever they have to share with me because I'm in dream come true mode. And I don't sometimes I don't even think it can get even better than what it is. And I want to say pinch me. So the word limitless is my word. And that is the gift you're giving me today. Well, limitless. That's fabulous. Gift Biz listeners, I know that you will join me in wishing Sean all the success with the Nobel Peace Prize nomination, and we'll all be watching out for that. And again, I appreciate all the information that you've shared. You've given us a couple of different ways to look at our businesses and to interact with people that I don't think we've shared on the podcast before. So that's really, really helpful to us. Thank you for your time today. I really enjoyed our chat. And Sean, may your candle always burn bright. Thank you so much. Learn how to work smarter while developing and growing your business. Download our guide called 25 Free Tools to Enhance Your Business and Life. It's our gift to you and available at giftbizunwrap.com slash tools. Thanks for listening and be sure to join us for the next episode. Today's show is sponsored by the Ribbon Print Company. Looking for a new income source for your gift business? Customization is more popular now than ever. Brand your products with your logo or print a happy birthday Jessica ribbon to add to a gift right at checkout. It's all done right in your shop or craft studio in seconds. Check out the ribbonprintcompany.com for more information. Would you like to be on the show? 
Or do you know someone who can provide valuable insight from their experiences? If so, we'd love to hear from you. All you need to do is submit a form for consideration. You can access the form at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash guest. That's giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash G-U-E-S-T. 